Welcome back to the shop everybody. We got a lot of work left to do on this so let's get right into it and see what we got. Let's have a quick look. These are all tacked up. Tacked at the ends only because these bars are fairly heavy and won't be buckling in the fire just from heating. And uh, I have positioned the handles on these so that the, um, the bent tail of the tang here is uh, aligned with the horizontal link of the chain just for an easy reference to keep in mind as long as i keep this flat during forging or perpendicular to the bottom die one or the other uh, i won't be hopefully clocking my billet um, erroneously inside so into the fire we go I left this little bit in here to show how at the start of every heat you bring the ram up to top dead center and when you're first running the hammer for the day you got to take the oil can and oil the more important points of the hammer. You just got to make it second nature to do that or these hammers will beat themselves to death and when you've rebuilt one you see a lot of evidence of people not having taken the time to do this. It's very frustrating. Now this being the first weld heat on this billet, you'll notice I'm not hitting it super hard and I'm tumbling it a lot so I don't pooch it one way and pull the welds apart before they really had a chance to set. I keep tumbling it a lot and I look at the open edge seams of everything, make sure everything is looking better and better and not worse at any point and developing more of a crack or a line or looking like it's not welding. Then I'll just put it back in the fire and give it a good soak after this. And on a side note real quick, check this out. This is what running these bars at a medium heat through the rolling mill at the same adjustment level for both bars will get you no height difference at all. All the way down, crisp corners. You just about shave with those corners. And then let me tumble these and Maybe five thou height difference. No height difference. So super easy to clean up. Very little waste. Nice and square. That's what I like. And let's have a look real quick. Let's brought these up to 120 grit. Give them a quick dip in ferric. And we have good connections for the most part, especially on these. These are a little bit of a break in the middle of the link, but again, you'd be surprised at how good that looks or how much it improves the smaller and smaller it gets. I'm okay with it. We got nice uh, separation here at the link overlap and round ends. That's what you get when you start with a larger billet um, and then put this end toward the side of the bar and then crush it down, um, it W's, or, you know, it makes a C there, and it actually will crush it round to look like the end of a link, which is just perfect for that. And then that 1080 left us a double black gap in there that welded up. It just, boom, looks like a chain. It looks like a chain. Uh, this is not my favorite in that these kind of fare off and, like, almost touch each other. Another thing that will grow less uh, visually bothersome the smaller this stuff gets. But uh, I am satisfied with it overall, and I think we are set up well going into uh, this four-way. So I'm just going to put it on the surface grinder, clean up all the appropriate faces, and I tack it up again, four-way it up. 
One other thing of note, these are all just as forged off of the power hammer and then the rolling mill. And they are just about as good as any squares I've ever seen. It really helps to be able to get results like this from your forging to be able to achieve and then maintain crisp patterns while you're building and then building them out and then drawing them. Um, the rolling mill acts as kiss blocks, but it doesn't push as much scale in as a press does. Uh, it's a little dirtier than the hammer, but it's more consistent than stop blocks on the hammer, faster than stop blocks on the press, not hard on your hammer, and it promotes even squarer edges than the power hammer does. So all in all, power hammer and then rolling mill at, to use as kiss blocks, because then you can like flip flop it, run it through 90 degrees, flip flop it, roll it back and forth till there's just no taper. Keep scraping the scale off, roll it a little lower temperature. It just comes nice and clean. There's no height difference in these bars. They are square as, uh, as your uncle from the 50s. And uh, I couldn't be more pleased with them. So I hope y'all are getting some good results like this too, or uh, on your way to doing it. Anyway, let's grind these. Let's have a look real quick. So we actually combined both of the handles into one handle now. It's got a T handle and that T runs uh, linear to the direction of the chain left to right. So that's easy to keep track of. These handles are just tacked together. Reason being this billet's getting heavier and uh, we don't want it like bending a lot when we take it out of the forge. 
just welded it strong and ugly onto the um, billet here. Billet's all tacked up. It's ready for the fire. And it is exceeding 10 pounds somewhere now. Maybe a 12-pound billet. I don't know. But uh, onwards. I'm going to go in for dinner. But in the morning, I'm going to throw this in. And I'm going to take you guys with me while I proceed to try to draw it out to four weighable length as a single billet, nice and square. Scraping some scale off here on the sharp edge of uh, part of the anvil stand. Right here I'm using the rolling mill effectively as a set of kiss blocks so I'm tumbling at 90, rolling it, tumble at 90, roll it and sometimes I'll add just a little bit of um, down pressure and roll it again several times. It'll come off the rollers even thickness but not necessarily flat so then I take it over to the hammer. I'm not forging it hard at all so it's not changing the dimension but it's straightening in it, it between those big flat dies just to get it real close and then it won't even come off the hammer perfectly flat so then I just take it over to the anvil and really just take whatever tiny remaining curvature there may be out by hand with a four pound hammer and just keep siding down it because the more perfect you get the less grinding you gotta do and that's money in the bank. And we're cutting that up. Got it in the vise. Let's get to turn on the saw. up 
perfect squares, all same exact size as each other, same length, nice and precise. Let's uh, have a quick etch at the ends. Well, that's coming along nicely. Everything is connecting pretty well. Pretty close to perfect. One, two, three of them are real good. One of them is just slightly off. But that is still good. I am liking it. Looks a whole lot like chain the farther away you get. So I'm alternating rows of chain. The uh, top row looks one way. The row below it looks slightly different. The third row down looks the same as the top row. Fourth row matches the second row. So it just makes everything a little bit more interesting and mixed up. And uh, all the links of one type connect a little bit better with each other than the links of the other type would with them. So anyway, now that we know how this all matches up best, we're going to go grind the uh, appropriate sides and uh, tack this back up and do yet another weld and draw because there's going to be one more four-way. We're just dunking this into some old quench oil, Parks 50 that wore out. And uh, I'd rather just use it for flux than throw it away entirely. Um, just to kind of burn off any residual oxygen between the layers and help uh, scale not to form on the surface while it's coming up to heat. So when we came off the hammer, before we went back into the forge, we put this billet in between the rollers, lowered the rollers down until they contacted the billet to set the roller height. Then we came out of the forge hot after heating the billet up with our rollers already set to the right height, plus I added uh, an eighth inch of feed. And then uh, we rolled it from one side and then the other side. You can see when we roll it, scale will appear and pop off. Uh, along the sides of the billet. You can see it forming right there. So I'd like to scrub that off a little bit uh, or knock it off before I go back through and kind of roll that into the billet surface by accident. Usually there's some sharp edges around or it'll just fall off if I don't need to scrub it on the sharp edges. And now we're all done with that one. Let's let it cool down and we'll saw it up and have a look. Thanks for staying with me this far. Next chapter should be a pretty interesting one. We'll have a little bit more four-way welding and stuff, but then we'll also be doing the feather cut and approaching our finished pattern. Stay tuned.